Today on the Home Winemaking channel, I'm going to cover a little bit more of an advanced topic, and that is how to test for completion of malolactic fermentation. If you want to learn a lot more about the more specialized ins and outs of home winemaking or winemaking in general, be sure to check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash makewine like Mark Copeland, who's learning all kinds of stuff over there. Malolactic fermentation is the bacterial fermentation that converts the sour tasting malic acid into lactic acid in wine. And this is gonna happen in almost all red wines, or at least you're generally gonna want it to happen. The reason you really wanna know if the, the fermentation has fully completed is well, one, there's some taste that you're gonna benefit from that kind of, you know, creamy smoothness of that lactic acid and the buttery diacetyl that comes with it. But I would say maybe more importantly is you want those wines to be shelf stable. You don't want malolactic fermentation happening in the bottle for your red wines, which you're often gonna age for, you know, years. And the reality of it is, is if it, you know, hasn't happened yet, and you put it in the bottle, it's only a matter of time before it, it happens in bottle, and you have kind of a, a fizzy wine, which is, it's embarrassing, all right? My malolactic test setup is just the Cellar Science paper chromatography test. It works pretty good. Uh, it's not cheap, it's about $100, but you can do, um, I don't know, a lot of tests. You could probably do 125 test with this kit, which is far, you know, more than you're probably going to do before you end up having to buy a little bit more solvent. I generally try to cram as many tests onto a piece of paper. And then in one season, you really only need maybe two or three of these pieces of chromatography paper. If you figure you can run, um, you know, five or six tests per paper, consolidate, do them kind of all in the same, um, same batch next day do another batch next day do another batch if you want to there's going to be six wines that i'm going to test today there's kind of a broad spectrum uh, i'm going to test some petite syrah cabernet sauvignon blend those are uh, lanza grapes from uh, the susun valley california and those are pretty much top tier home wine making grapes that's the top end of the spectrum main and maybe you can go a little bit higher but you're gonna be hard pressed to find grapes better than those I've got some kind of mid-grade grapes, some Lodi grapes that are uh, Merlot Petit Verdot blend that I'm gonna test. And then I'm actually gonna test um, these finer wine kits I've been messing around with. You can get those on label peelers. I'm trying to figure out if they're worth the hype or not, which you'll later find out on a video maybe in the next couple months when I really have some time to get a feel for those kits. I did find that they do have malic acid though and a lot of these kits will say they're you know acid balanced or whatever they want to say but if you really are making it from fresh grapes um, you're going to have malic acid and while the instructions don't say to put the wine through mal malolactic fermentation i'm good i just wanted to do it i'm kind of always steering the wine versus trying to kind of follow a you know standardized instruction so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start by getting out a piece of my paper chromatography paper here. Just looks like any ordinary, maybe like white construction paper. And then I'm just gonna make a line across the bottom. By the way, this is not just normal construction paper. Um, you have to basically buy this special chromatography paper. This line's gonna be one inch off the bottom and I'm going to use pencil. Uh, don't use pen for this line because what will happen is the pen will just kind of wick up and muddy up the, the results of your test. Then I'm going to make three X's over here about and uh, maybe a little bit over an inch apart. And then what I'll write under my these X's are going to be for my acid standards. There's going to be three standards malic acid, lactic acid, and tartaric acid. Malic, lactic, tar, 
Tarek. And then I'll make some more X's for each of the wines that I'd like to test. So in this case, I'm gonna make six X's. Maybe the biggest beauty of this whole test is that you can, it's a little bit tedious to run it, but you're testing all these wines at the same time, which kind of offsets the kind of annoyance of this test. So we'll say PS cab one, So I have my standards, Malik, Lactic, Tartaric, and then my six wines, three Petit Syrah Cab blends, the finer wine kits, and um, the Petit Verdot Merlot blend. Now I'm gonna take my little standards. So this is just a solution with tartaric acid in it. So um, kind of have a baseline. Stick a little capillary tube in there. And we want to make like a quarter inch dot on here. There we go. And I'll do that for tartaric, lactic, and malic. I like to keep these in the fridge when I'm not using them because I, uh, I don't want them to start kind of fermenting. And you're only gonna use these capillary tubes once because you don't wanna cross contaminate here. We'll just dip it right in the wine here. And this isn't like beer where you're obsessive about um, sterilization because if you look at our whole sole purpose of what we're doing here is trying to make this so that nothing really can ferment in the wine. So, you know, it becomes shelf stable. Give it a little tap if you need to. And then we'll just hang it up to dry for about a half hour, just enough time for these dots to be dry. It's been about a half hour and all the little dots are dry. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and I'll staple the, uh, the two sides together. And I'm not going to overlap this at all. I'm just going to kind of butt them together. And then I'll put a staple in the bottom. That should do the trick. And then in our big jar, um, I filled it to the about three eighths of an inch high with this um, solvent, which comes with the kit and is really, really smelly and cannot be good for you. So when you open this thing up, just be ready to stick your paper in, shut it, close it. Um, you really don't wanna be doing this in a, you know, enclosed area. But basically we just want the paper to be touching the solvent and it will wick it up. Shut the lid. And now I'm gonna leave this undisturbed. You could have results as soon as maybe four hours, but I'm just gonna let it go overnight. I'll check tomorrow morning. And what you're really waiting for is this solvent to wick all the way to the top of the paper. It'll carry the acids with it, um, only so high. So tartaric's gonna go to one level, malic's gonna go to another level, and um, lactic is gonna go to another level. And you'll end up with a piece of paper that looks like this with these dots indicating what acids are in the wine. So we'll find out soon. So we've got some results here. I took the paper out of the jar this morning. Um, it was really, really cold out. I normally like to air it out outside, but it was 18 degrees Fahrenheit this morning. So I let it mostly air out in the garage. Um, and then I put it under the heater vent here when things were pretty dry it wasn't fuming off so bad it really needs to dry out good to to give you the results and give you this green color with dots on it 
So let's take a look at it and see what kind of results we got. All right, so we'll start by taking a look at the dots that our acid standards made. So you can see here, tartaric lifted about this high, and every wine, as expected, has a dot indicating that there's tartaric acid in that wine. Of course, these are all grape-based wines, so you're definitely going to get a tartaric dot. If you didn't, something, <laughs> something's wrong. Um, over here, we've got lactic. That's the highest going all the way up here. And, you know, when you start to see a lactic dot, it's an indication that malolactic fermentation um, is either partially complete or fully complete. So you can see um, every wine here has a lactic dot, some a little bit more um, kind of pronounced than others. And then the other one we're really interested in here is the malic dot. So if malolactic fermentation is complete, you don't want to see a dot under malic. And we don't see any dots except this one here kind of has a little bit of a malic and a little bit of a lactic dot. So that would indicate this particular wine is probably, you know, partially completed malolactic fermentation. It's possible that I got some bleed over from kind of wrapping it. Um, that's why you don't really want to overlap. Um, I kind of butted it, but maybe I should have left a little bit more of a gap. But I do think this is a accurate result. Um, this wine is pretty fruity, and that's also kind of something you'll get in a wine that hasn't completed malolactic fermentation. So these wines here um, are going to be bottle stable in the sense that they're not going to go through malolactic fermentation in the bottle. There's no malic acid left for that bacteria to eat. This wine, um, I need to either be careful with it in the sense that, you know, I make sure that it's got a adequate sulfite dose when it goes into the bottle, or I need to try to get this wine to complete malolactic fermentation and it's been so long now that my best bet is to you know make a big malolactic starter um, maybe even give the wine just a little bit of air to bring the sulfite levels down and try to get it through but I'm not going to do that I'm going to take the approach of this is a nice fruit forward wine it has lactic acid it's got a little bit of malic acid um, as long as it's sulfited, it's gonna be it's gonna be fine. Maybe I won't really plan to age this wine for years and years. This might be a drink in the next two to three years kind of wine. You can see this test. I mean, it's really pretty easy to to read. It's really pretty easy to do. Um, it's got a little bit of initial cost, but you know, if you're pretty into winemaking. Um, maybe it's something you should consider having in your uh, your cabinet of, of tests. So unless you're a winery with a lab that can do the enzymatic uh, malic acid test to know, you know, exactly how many grams per liter in the wine of malic acid there is, uh, this is going to be the test for you, this paper chromatography kind of DIY test. If you have any tricks, um, for this kind of testing or just anything you want to say in the comments, be sure to mention it below. Hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching.